Today's Unseminary podcast episode is brought to you by Regal Theatre Church, the only theatre company providing full-service consultation for churches wanting to create dynamic worship services in familiar, culturally relevant venues, the local movie theatre. With lots of parking, spacious lobbies, plenty of bathrooms, and a perfect view of the screen from a comfortable seat, Regal Theatres are ideal for church plants and multi-sites. Learn more at regaltheaterchurch.com or call their incredible team at 1-800-792-8244 today. Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. Are you looking for practical ministry help to drive your ministry further, faster? Have a sinking feeling that your ministry training didn't prepare you for the real world? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others in pursuit of stuff that we wish they had taught in seminary. Buckle up and let's get started with this week's Unseminary Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. My name's Rich, the host around these parts. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. I'm so glad that you've decided to take some time with us. We know that things are really busy at your church, particularly as we head into the weekend, and it's our honor that you would take some time to listen in today. And you're going to be rewarded for for that because we've got a great interview lined up today. I'm super pumped and excited about this for a while. Greg Curtis from Eastside Church in Anaheim, California. I'm on the le- I'm on the left, the right coast in Jersey. He's in California. You know, we're coming together. Look at this. You know, the, the kingdom of God actually does bridge the whole, you know, the whole uh, country. Greg, welcome to the show. Oh, great to be here, Rich. Thanks. Uh, I'm so glad that you've taken you know, some time out to be with us. For folks that don't know, uh, Eastside Church is a great church. Uh, they have two locations, uh, one in California and the other one in Minnesota, I believe, right? Is that yeah, true? that's true. Which we got to hear a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, currently a church of about 5,000 people. You may know uh, the lead pastor there, Gene Apple, a great, uh, great leader. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Eastside? Give us kind of the flavor of the church and tell us about your role there. Okay. Uh, I came to Eastside when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. We moved from L.A. County to Orange County, and my experience in the youth group, Les Christie was the the youth pastor at the time, and it it was so impactful, it just kind of uh, redirected my life path, my career path. I Mm. felt a call to ministry, and when I was 22, Eastside, which was a church when I got there of about 750, 800 people, but Mm -hmm. when I graduated from high school, it was 2,250, Wow, and... uh, Gene Apple was a young intern mm-hmm. under the under our our lead pastor at hmm. the time, and he lived in our house and thought he was a great guy. And later on, he went on to great things at other churches. And then I uh, uh, I was uh, part of a staff team to start a daughter church okay. in a community nearby. Yeah, where I was at for 27 years, the last 17 years as a senior pastor. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, Gene Apple was called when when uh, the pastor retired, the mm-hmm. previous pastor retired, and eight years ago, Gene came back, and uh, it as they went through some facility issues from the growth, we were going through facility issues. We decided Mm. to re-merge the churches after 27 years. Crazy. At a new campus, at a Boeing plant that we bought, and we just moved them together three years ago. Mm -hmm. 84% of my church is still a part of this whole thing. Wow, that's incredible. International Ministries got supported, everything. A very successful merge, and then um, uh, my ministry has been uh, really at the the heart of my passion, which is connecting people mm. both to God and to the community of faith. Because in uh, when we did this, it was such explosive growth. The church almost over the, the period of the last several years like tripled in size. Wow. And so, um, I mean, we have like 14,000 for Christmas. We right. have like, to, I mean, it's just it, it's huge. a lot of people. Numbers. Yeah. And, um, you know, we'll average in the fives, but it, it'll be in the sevens and eights for anything special and bigger than that for, for uh, real big weekends. And so we have a ton of guests to mm-hmm. assimilate. Mm-hmm. And uh, when um, the church became, uh, through Outreach Magazine, we didn't even know it, the 11th fastest growing church in the country that <laughs> Right. You know, we had a big job. He, Gene basically gave me a blank slate uh, in creating an assimilation strategy to really mm. connect these people and mm. help them become followers of Jesus. So that that's right in my wheelhouse, and I've been loving it. Very uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, I think a lot of times when people see a fast-growing church like Eastside, it's easy to look at kind of the evangelism strategies or the like, hey, what are we doing on the front end to like, yeah. whether it's, you know, big special Christmas stuff or Easter stuff or maybe some cool ser- series. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that I love about what's happening at Eastside is really you're spending a lot of time, a considerable amount of time working really on the connection side or the assimilation side uh, of the conversation. Um, why don't you give us a sense of kind of the scope of that? What is it that you're doing uh, to help people take steps closer to, you know, getting connected to the church and then ultimately, obviously, to Jesus? 
Well, we have a Eastside has a simple church strategy, which is mm-hmm. familiar, I think, to mm-hmm. a lot of your audience. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, when Gene got here, he he took the church for thirty three ministries down to three. Wow! And the way we put it, and he uh, and he stood the test of time on that. He's still there, <laughs> which is incredible. <laughs> totally, you know. And part of it was because of his history with the church way right. back when. He's always been a loved. A loved person, you right, know. Right, right. So he had a lot of relationship, and Gene, you know, he's got a book called "How to Change Your Church Without Killing It." His, mm-hmm. he has done this at different congregations, and his his real one of his big strengths is change, mm-hmm. is architecting change mm-hmm. in churches. So he did this well, but it was pretty severe, you mm-hmm. know. You can imagine of, and none of these ministries weren't ministries that that were failing. Right. Yeah, they were working, and that's harder to kill them. <laughs> it, yeah, it was stewardship of energy wow. and resources. So right. uh, it it broke down to three things: we we pursue God in weekend services, mm-hmm. we build community and connection groups, mm-hmm. and we um, unleash compassion through local and global initiatives. Mm. That's all we do. Wow. At, and so we do have a Friday night of hope, which which is more like a hospital, you mm-hmm. know, for people both new to the church, it's a good assimilation piece. Mm-hmm. And people who have been following Jesus for quite a while who find themselves in a situation they didn't expect, whether through grief share or divorce care or addiction or mm-hmm. uh, those kinds of things, cancer support. So, uh, and that just, but that kicks it back into these three other environments. Mm-hmm. So what we needed is to, um, is kind of a, what we call a first step, next step, big step strategy is, okay. is what we architected to mm-hmm. a design to move people from one environment into the next. In other words, they come to a weekend service. How do we get them connected in a connection group? How do we get them on a ministry team? This mm-hmm. kind of thing. And so the way it works is, is uh, first step is Jesus is my Lord, East Side is my church. Okay. As, as that's what we want to accomplish. Yep. And um, But under Jesus is my Lord, we've identified seven areas of training Mm. that we want them to receive in order to follow Jesus, you know, basically in these seven areas of life. Right. And so uh, that has some meat to it. And and feeling called to Eastside, added to Eastside as a member of the body of Christ, not just I go here because they have a cool youth group or I like the worship or right. I like Jesus. They got cool teacher. lights. Um, it, so people, give me a sense of how people are are getting connected from, say, the big service to these first this first step first step with Gene and then this, you know, experience. What does that look like? How often are you do that? Is that like, what, what is that process? We do, uh, if I break down first step into Jesus is my Lord and Eastside is my church, this yep. is how that works. Uh, the answer in simple church format, even at our info counter, we have no brochures. It is as clean as a daisy because there's nothing to invite them to except one thing. Mm-hmm. The joke on our staff is the answer to every question is first step with Gene. Right. First step with Gene. Okay. And so, um, how do I become a volunteer? First step with Gene. How do I find a connection group? First step with Gene. How do I find out what the church believes, its vision? How do I learn how to read the Bible? How do I become a member? First step with Gene. And at First Step with Gene, he invites them. It's a free lunch or dinner after the Saturday or evening services. We Mm -hmm. do it eight times a year. Okay. Great. That's a lot. That's cool. Yes. Eight times a year. And they feed uh, two of them. Uh, What we do is a seven week. Mm-hmm. training course called the first step experience which is what's behind me yeah 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 and and where he says i would rather you miss church for 7 weeks than not go to this wow so a huge commitment to it eight times yeah. a year you're pushing hey i'd rather you come to this rather than our services that's a that's a big deal now do you do anything like within your i'm obviously within your service you're saying something hey if you're here for the first time if you're, if yes. you're a new here person what what's that look like what that looks like is every week we have an announcement where people say, hey, we want to meet you at Guest Central. We have a room, and we also have an area on the other side of the church, like a cart and stuff. But we have a nice room, like hospitality suite kind of room. Mm-hmm. And uh, we said, we, we'd love to meet you. Would you trade your connection card for it? We have a gift for you. And it's right. they put it up on the screen. And it's an insulated orange East Side cup, and it's stuffed with homemade cookies mm. and an invitation to First Step with Gene. Okay. Uh, so they come there. They trade their card, so we get their contact info. Mm-hmm. On the back of it, you can sign up for First Step with Gene by checking a circle. Okay. And our, our volunteers are trained that, that it is not uh, – that their job is not to make them just feel welcome and return to the worship service with a bright orange cup the following week. 
it's for them to end up at first step with Gene, mm-hmm. because that's where uh, that's where he confronts them with a the decision to follow Jesus. And I'm not kidding. One third of the room uh, decides to follow Jesus every single time. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's incredible. And, and a lot of these people, um, we had a Muslim man do that last huh. We just did it last weekend. Wow. Uh, we have people from all backgrounds, all ethnicities. We A lot of the people, it's their first time in church was that weekend. And he just wow. says, follow me over. Let's just do it. You know, come and wow. have pizza with us. Huh. And he shares his heart, his testimony, his story, the East Side's history, and the gospel. And, and then he says, now we need to get you trained. So, And Greg and his teaching team uh, will do that. So, hmm. so our, uh, And our guest central workers, I think this is worth sharing, what they do also is, uh, in addition to giving them the cup and, and asking them if, they, if they'd like to sign up for First Step with Gene and explain what that is, uh, it answers all their questions, is that they, they end up writing a card, uh, a little personal false card, handwritten, that we make sure is not run through the postage machine. It's stamped and it's mm-hmm. hand addressed. Mm-hmm. And they put a, like a, a, a gift to their, uh, to our, uh, a, a gift card to our Compassion Cafe. Mm-hmm. You know, for free stuff mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. I just man, I said it was awesome meeting you, praying for your mom or whatever personal thing you know this week, and uh, just use this this gift card on me. And not only does that make them feel welcome, but we even can track those second time visits very well through our mm. our, our coffee. Mm-hmm. Our coffee. Yeah, because you know whether they use it or not. Exactly. Hmm. All right, so okay, that makes sense. I think uh, you know you're, one thing you've underlined there that I don't want people to miss. Is that you're pushing everything to this? That there's, you know, it all rides on first steps with Gene, which is, which I think some churches kind of miss that they drop that ball, and it becomes there's a lot of different things going on. Yeah. it's hard to point people in what direction. Let, let, let me give you a great example with baptism. Yeah. we baptize. I know we baptize around 800 people a year around here, wow. and it's just it's it's amazing uh, the amount of people that respond to the gospel spontaneously in the mm-hmm. services, mm-hmm. and uh, we do that, uh, you know, about four to six times a year in these mm-hmm. ba- big baptism weekends. And when a person's baptized, um, they come out of the water, and once they dry off, they're handed a gift bag with a new Bible uh, and a a orange bracelet, like rubber bracelet, that says first step, which they think is all that I just took my first step with Jesus, which they did. Mm-hmm. But it also kind of connects to the invitation to first step with Jesus. Oh, and that's great. Bag, right? That's great. And then... Uh, they get uh, that night. They get a text of a photo of their baptism to them that they can use on social media, mm-hmm. which, which helps with outreach. But what what's really cool is on Wednesday they get a, a one minute video from me uh, by email, and uh-huh. it just says, "And I I do the baptisms with Gene. There's two yep. of us. Yep. I'd say it was an honor to baptize you last weekend. And by Wednesday you're probably saying, "What now? Let me mm-hmm. tell you what now. It's first step with Gene, and mm-hmm. here's the link. You know, and you can register. Mm-hmm. Though though you could come spontaneously too, but right." Uh, but we have them register and invite them to. And then they get a personal phone call by a staff person relevant to who they are. And mm. they they hear their story. They say what it, how great it was. And then they see if they've been to First Step with Gene. If they haven't, they say, hey, why First don't step you come next one? I'll sign you up. <laughs> and then the right. following week, they get a, a baptism certificate, a letter from Gene, and it invites them to First Step with Gene. So literally, mm. it's just everything, like you said, drives them to one thing. Right. Yeah, that's huge. I don't want church leaders to miss that. I think we have to make it super, it has to be strategic and it has to be obvious. Those next steps have to make to push people in the direction you want them to go. But you can't have people wondering, mm, I wonder what it is. And, and I love what you're doing. They're layering multiple times the same message. So let's say I go through that. I'm, you know, I, I've, whether I've accepted Christ or not, I've kind of done the seven weeks. What is the next step from there? What is the kind of outcome out of that experience for people? The seven weeks? Um, it is incredible because what we do is um, we we put them at tables mm-hmm. that are similar zip code of town and similar life stage. So okay. we ask enough information when they sign up at First Step with Gene mm-hmm. to put them in some good tables. And we I, I always tell them we're going to promise you at First Step with uh, or, or the First Step experience you're going to get three things: faith, uh, fr- fun, and friends. The oh, nice. the faith part is I'm not going to be your teacher. I'm going to be your coach. Mm-hmm. You're going to get a backpack, and they get a backpack week one. Hmm. And we're going on a journey, and I explained it like that. I use the Grand Canyon as a metaphor for all this, but I said you're mm-hmm. gonna um, you're gonna get a backpack, and each week of the training, you're gonna receive a new object for your backpack that will reinforce the training. Mm. You're gonna get assignments every week, and you're gonna share them at your tables with these friends how they're going, and do discussion questions with them and build relationships. Mm. Then the fun part is we have these competitions with great prizes. Mm. Um, one person wins their whole table wins, so the tables start competing against each other. It goes kind of nuts. It's real fun. Mm. But I said, the, but the um, 
the uh, friend part is that after seven weeks, one third to two thirds of the tables at First Step Experience launches connection groups. Really? Yes. Wow. So, uh, and we have that table launching mm -hmm. has affected so much of what we do. We table launch at everything. We Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. We do do that, mm -hmm. and uh, we 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 put them at tables and we launch them as connection groups. People not even from our church. Sixty percent aren't from our church, huh. and we give them a curriculum from Craig Rochelle and Dave Ramsey to do it with. We huh. just launch these groups by tables at every event we do, no matter what it is. Very and we cool. learned that from starting it at First Step Experience. Right, right. And week, week five at First Step Experience is interesting on the volunteer piece of a simulation because what we do at week five is an all-access tour. Mm. So during it's, these, these, the First Step Experience happens during church. Okay, okay, yep. That we offer child care and all that for that. So they go around and they go behind the stage. We have a huge LED screen. They get to see <laughs> it from the back during game time. Oh, that's fun. They go in the green room. They go in the children's areas. They go out in the parking lot, volunteers, Compassion Cafe, everywhere. And at each stop, a little uh, a volunteer comes out and talks about why that's the best place on earth to serve. Mm. And when it's done, when they get back in the first step experience room, they uh, sign up uh, for an area of service mm. and it gets going. And so many times by the time that they are done with first step experience, they're already taking their next step, which at mm -hmm. our church means they're in a connection group or ministry team. Okay, very cool. So then obviously you're creating, I'm assuming throughout the first step experience, you're creating all these hooks like you're, you're describing here, all these, hey, here's some potential. Is there a formal kind of at the end of, you know, first step where you're, you're literally kind of closing the deal for, as a sense of kind of asking people to take their next step to find a team or, or a group? Well, yeah, uh, at week five, they start that conversation. Right. They get assignments, and that assignment, one of the assignments that week is to respond to the contact they get on Wednesday okay. by that, by that cool. area. And hopefully that deal gets sealed within that last two weeks. On week seven, not, by that time, we've prepared them for the conversation. Is your table going to launch or not? And we have a coach mm -hmm. that comes in and meets with them and gets them going, registers them as a group, gets their resources and says, I'm your go-to person. Very and they're cool. vol they're volunteers. So um, most of the time, that that's how it's handled. And then if they don't do it that way, we have other ways to connect with groups and other on onboardings, you know, for mm -hmm. volunteers. Mm -hmm. But the result of this, Rich, is after that first year of of that explosive growth we had, one out of three of our we had nineteen hundred ninety three guests actually sign a card during that year. Mm -hmm. So just about two thousand. By the end of that year, one out of three got baptized. Wow. One out of two got in a connection group. Oh, my goodness. One out of seven graduated from the First Step experience. One out of seven became a volunteer. One out of 14 went on a compassion trip overseas. And mm. one, out of, one out of 20 became a leader. Wow. That's incredible. And have those kind of, has that assimilation kind of statistics kind of continued to bear out over these last couple of years or what, what has happened? What you're kind of, as you, because obviously you're tracking the front end first time guests to then people getting connection. What does that look like? The lowest, the lowest in the three years that we've ever gotten is about one out of uh, one out of three or between one out of three and four becoming a connection group and one out of eight becoming a volunteer. But we always do these That's dial turns. To make sure that we that that it's it's staying within a range of health, and we've got goals to to better on that. There, that's not as as good as we want to be. So right. uh, we've got plans to to hopefully increase those steps. Yeah, for folks that are listening in, church leaders that are listening in that don't know those numbers, that's mm -hmm. a great place for you to start to dig around and figure out where are your kind of first time guests to kind of people being connected. What that means in your church. Um, and the fact that your worst case is one in three is incredible. That from an industry wide point of view, that is amazing. A lot of churches are less than 10%, you know, able to keep, you know, their, their guests. So you're tripling that on your, in your worst well, case scenario. Well, in all honesty, it's one out of three get baptized. Right. So one right, out right, of, right. And one out of seven become a volunteer, but, but one out of two to one out of three get in a connection group. So you're, you're not far. Right. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. That's that's very good. Okay, so first step, next step, big step. What is big step? Big step is that I'm leaving Christ's footprint on this world through my little foot by crossing a border local and globally, you know, mm -hmm. locally and globally through. And we have things like serve days where we do Title One schools, all that stuff. And we we have prolific works in, in seven different countries, uh, mm. East Siders that have gone there. Uh, we we sponsor uh, collectively our church. Uh, sponsors over 2,000 children, most mm. of which are in this one community in Mathari that has literally transformed a slum. It's, mm. it's amazing. But mm. uh, anyway, it's, it's uh, 
crossing a border locally and globally in compassion. And then the second is developing my influence. Okay. We have three levels of volunteer positions. Mm -hmm. And I like this. Not all churches feel comfortable with this, but we have green light, yellow light, and red light service opportunities. Green okay. light is a Hindu or an atheist can do it. <laughs> right. Yes. Okay. We don't care. Right. If you want to get under the hood and fix a car for a single mom at our car clinic, happy uh, our compassion efforts join us you know what right. i mean and we have uh, we have several things that they could do on and off campus mm -hmm. and uh because i think uh uh we want to move away from the believe become belong mm -hmm. model institutional model to belong become believe right and so people have to belong when we they have to feel that sense of of our love mm -hmm. and our belonging the moment we meet them no matter who mm -hmm. they are very true very true and so Allowing them to serve alongside of us in green light positions is an mm -hmm. important feature of that. Mm -hmm. The yellow light positions are just a little caution, like mm -hmm. let's get to know you and it and you know where where you're at in your your surrender to Christ and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Red light is okay. We want you to be uh, a baptized follower of Jesus who's graduated for the first step experience because your life is going to directly germinate and and uh, positively affect other lives. It's life on life influence, mm -hmm. and we want to develop that for you. Mm -hmm. And so we see the big step as not just crossing borders and compassion, but also developing your influence in some kind of a red light way, one or the other. Mm -hmm. That's happens. very cool. I, you know, I, just to encourage people who might be challenged a little bit about by your green light, you know, mm -hmm. roles, we've experienced the same thing at our church. We have a wide open um, on particularly our cat compassion experiences and have seen that those experiences are great front end experiences for people. There are people are more likely to invite their friends or have been very likely to invite their friends to a, we just did a thing last weekend where we, we served or we pulled together 200,000 meals for folks. Um, and we had all kinds of first time guests come to that who they, they're not coming to our, our weekend service. They're saying, Hey, I'd love to get plugged in here. Now for us, that then is a way that we begin developing a relationship. And there right. are people within our church that, that, you know, that really is a, is a significant step for them from, out of the seats into serving um, through one of those experiences. So, yeah. I, you know, you strongly encourage people to think that through in their context. For sure. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Great. Is there anything else you want to share before we move on with the rest of the episode? You know, there's one thing that I think is an interesting learning mm -hmm. when it comes to this environment. If you have an event like First Step with Gene that you're trying to drive everybody to, to, mm -hmm. to and then kind of dispense them into their, uh, uh, you know, the, the, right, the right fit and connection. Um, when we started that, we just had people come in the room and they'd sit wherever they, they get their pizza, sit down mm -hmm. and, and they were awkwardly silent with all the other people <laughs> at their table who may or may not be like them or mm -hmm. they're new. There's just, they, they, they just looked uncomfortable and please start the program. <laughs> right. Um, I ended up going to Central Christian Church in Vegas and, uh, which is a church, uh, Gene had pastored and really grew, mm -hmm. uh, in the past and saw that they did an event that had table hosts. Mm -hmm. And so what I ended up doing, this secret sauce of the table host was was night and day difference, mm -hmm. is that we we put a, a host, usually a first-step experience grad, mm -hmm. sitting there, and then we assign the people by um, birds of a feather to mm -hmm. tables as mm -hmm. they walk in the guests. And, and so they'll sit down, and that person is in charge of questions, uh, cards, and calls. The, the question is, they ask two questions. Hey, how'd you find East Side? Mm -hmm. And what, what made you come back a second time? Mm. And the beauty of that is uh, it's not personal and everybody has it in common. And as soon as one person mm. answers, they just and, – and there's so much energy and connection that mm. Gene, the first time we did it, he goes, "How?" He goes, there, the energy in this room is 10x. What, what happened? I what go, happened? it's table host. So now we have, to, we have to do some things to get their attention up front and break <laughs> the connection. One time, a table launches a connection group right there. Wow. Yeah, it so just let's hit. just keep doing the life together. Post said, "I love you." They live, and they just just start a connection group. So wow, uh, cool. that happened one time, but that that's what they do, and then they pass out the cards and whatever, and and, mm -hmm. and talk to them, you know, at, at various part, parts to get them signed up, answer their questions, and then at the end they take down their contact info and they call them by Wednesday or email them and say, "I love meeting you. Saw you sign up for First Step Experience. Are you going to love it?" Or saw you didn't sign up, but I hope you can in the future. There'll be another one, mm -hmm. and it just really that has. We went our our our, our signups for first step experience and for that whole that whole discipleship uh, mm -hmm. training and following Jesus thing went through the roof. Mm -hmm. In fact, now that we one time we had a a table host who had to leave, two table hosts that and that never happens. Mm -hmm. But we saw that nobody at their tables signed up mm -hmm. for first step experience, and all the other ones almost all had a hundred percent. Wow. 
That's wow. the difference that table host piece made. Big deal. Big deal That's for sure. This is the Unseminary Podcast. Stuff you wish they taught in seminary. Well, today uh, we've had a great interview so far with Greg Curtis from Eastside Christian Church. Fantastic conversation all around assimilation. I hope you're getting uh, a lot of this. I'm sure you are. We're going to jump into the lightning round that part of the episode where we ask similar questions of everybody that's on the show. Uh, Greg, what's an online resource that you're using these days that's helping your ministry? Well, it's kind of more helping me personally. It's called the <laughs> Abide app. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the Abide app is this spiritual formation app that creates like one and a half, two minute to maybe eight minute, um, how do I say it? Meditations. It oh, guides you through cool. a meditation. It has, you pick the style of music in the background. Huh. It makes you think of certain things. You press pause, and the music continues as you talk about God with that. Then you press play, and it keeps leading uh, you very through cool. it. On a variety of topics, you pick a mentor, hmm. and it's an incredible way to um, – it even has classic uh, – uh, some of the classic writings of saints and other things in there hmm. and prayers. It's just – phenomenal and it really is a great centering resource and in, in the abide app it, i recommend it to everybody very cool what's a book you've read in the last i don't know six months to a year that's shaping your thinking or ministry i would say uh, it's not directly about ministry but right. it has huge implications and that's the prodigal god by tim mm-hmm. keller a lot of yeah, your listeners book. know that but i feel like it's just it's description of the elder brother explains why assimilation is so hard for us right now in mm-hmm. churches in our culture and how if we really tap into what that he's talking about how a simulation could just flow so much better. Mm, Very cool. Very cool. Great book. If you haven't read it, Um, what what are some other ministry you're looking to that's inspiring you? Church of the Highlands in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. Uh, uh, They're amazing. They, you know, we have a, a, we've launched a campus, like you mentioned earlier in Minnesota, totally by accident. (laughs) We're launching another one locally here uh, this spring. And we hope to launch a, a total of four in the next two years. Very cool. And they are running almost 40,000 uh, people in like 13 campuses right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have some great things with uh, connection groups, a free market system, surrounding hubs. I mean, all, all the, this really neat strategy. But one of the things is they do our, our first step experience. They do it in four weeks. And they just offer it all the time. So week one is always the same. Week two is always the same. Mm. And you can just jump in. And rather than go through it in order, you could go through it, you know, uh, interesting. You could go yep. through it out of order. If you mm-hmm. miss a week, you pick it up the next month. Mm-hmm. And they they have a really high volume revolving uh, door to get people through there. And that's that's an interesting thing that we're looking at. Mm, yeah, interesting challenge. They're a fantastic church. They're a great church for sure. Uh, what's 50, If you could get 15 minutes with any leader alive today, who would you want to get that with and why? Well, it might surprise some people, but I think I would say Pope Francis. Nice. Great leader. He's been mentioned a couple times on the show. Great Has leader. Has he really? No yeah. Kidding. You might be the second person, but not a lot, a few times. Okay. Um, I think as a, in my strength finder, mm-hmm. my number one is connector. Okay. Connector. Yep. yep. And I see him in his work with the disenfranchised mm. and the way that he relates with people, the way he even uses Skype like this to talk to large audiences. Mm-hmm. And what his challenge is in in what he sees as a, is reforming mm-hmm. the church mm-hmm. um, is something that I, I think really, you know, the concepts in the prodigal God, and it's mm-hmm. something that is big on my heart so that we can become a body of believers that, that really serve the disenfranchised, mm-hmm. whether it's mm-hmm. the poor or the hurting or the broken. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I would, his, his task is much bigger than mine. And I would love to have 15 <laughs> minutes to say, hey, how do you deal with this on the, uh, at the elevation that you fly at? So right. very cool. Yeah. Great leader for sure. Doing, you know, doing great stuff. Um, well, I'm sure, you know, uh, trying to wrestle through all this assimilation stuff is takes a lot of time, effort, energy. When you want to recharge, just do something to kind of, you know, whether it's unplug or plug in, whatever the you know right analogy is, um, what do you do? What do you do for fun? Our day off at Eastside uh, is is Mondays, okay. and I go to the beach. Oh, I, nice. I don't live too far from Laguna Beach, about twenty minute drive, and I get down there. And uh, when it's warm, I'm in the water. When it's not, I'm just sitting in my chair, staring mm. at the ocean. It's bigger than I am. It's been there before I am. It'll be there when I'm mm. gone. <laughs> and my whole life gets back in perspective. And the other thing is uh, about three times a year, my, my wife and I, we love to go wine tasting in the vineyards of the central nice. coast of California. Cool. We love that whole area. And that, cool. that's a real retank for us. Well, you're, you're living the classic California life right there. You just described <laughs> it. That's what everyone's, you know, stereotypical that you think that's what it is all day long, peaches and wine tasting. So, <laughs> <laughs> Greg, this has been fantastic. I've loved today's conversation. Thank you so much for being on. If people want to get in touch with you or with uh, the church, I know you have an event.
event coming up uh, that you want to talk about. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's called Climbing the Assimilayas. And <laughs> that, that's kind of a weird thing that happened out of a presentation once to our staff. But we look at the uh, uh, assimilation as like climbing Everest and that we in the uh, ministries that connect people are mm -hmm. Sherpas, mm -hmm. helping people go from a base camp like First Step to another camp like the Next Step. And of course, the summit is a connected serving member. Mm -hmm. So in helping other churches and other leaders learn about assimilation, I'm putting together an event on January 14 and 15 called mm -hmm. Climbing the Assimilayas. It's a, a day and a half, half day Thursday, all day Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can get in touch with me and find out more information on it on my blog, mm -hmm. which is uh, at gregcurtis-assimilation.com. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We'll put a link in the show notes about that too. So people Thank can just go there yeah. and find that easily. Okay. That's great. Well, Greg, I appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great weekend and you know, appreciate you challenging us today. Thanks, Mini. Uh, great to meet you, Rich. Thanks so much. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Don't be shy. We'd love to connect. Check out Unseminary Inbox. You can sign up at unseminary.com and we'll send you helpful training resources every week. Plus, you'll gain immediate access to our exclusive members area with tons of resources you can use. Connect with Rich on Twitter at Rich Birch or through email rich at unseminary.com. Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode at unseminary.com. It includes links to what we talked about today and more. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Did you enjoy today's episode? Drop by iTunes and leave a review. Thanks again for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Join us next week when we'll learn more stuff we wish they taught in seminary. <laughs>